So should you invest through the Monzo platform, they've just launched a brand new investment side to the bank's business. Should you use it? And if you have a Monzo account, you've probably been getting countless notifications <laughs> and alerts saying that they've got this new service where you can invest. And maybe you're thinking, should I go for it? And this is what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so this video will answer that question and lots of you ask us if you would re we would review the platforms you're thinking about using. And for us, it always comes down to two main things. The first is the investments themselves, what you invested in. And second is the fees. And it always comes back to that. People ask us, what do you think of this platform? What do you think of this offering, this provider? And we always say those are the two things that you need to look at, the fees and what the investments are. So let's get into it. Yes, Mondo Investments leave the hard work to us. Three investment options. Okay, good, keeps simple. it simple. Experts take care of everything. What does mm, that make you think? That makes me think that it is actively managed, that there's a human deciding what your money will be invested in. And for me, that's a no-no. So that's a red flag straight away. Well, let's actually see if that's right or not yes. by going down into the investments. Uh, you need a Monzo account, like etc. etc. The graph isn't based on investments we offer. Great, so they've got a graph showing profit that isn't based on anything. <laughs> Uh, it looks like a very pretty graph though. Yeah, the same three bits, three investment options, experts manage your money, and they have a bite-sized knowledge thing which will actually teach you as you go through this. Then we come on to this section here, uh, which talks about picking the ready-made fund that suits your goals and the level of risk you're happier to take, uh, which most of the industry is based on your they do these little surveys to identify your risk tolerance and then give you investments that aren't actually good for you based on your risk tolerance the entire finance industry has confused volatility with risk so this is fairly normal we don't like it but this is fairly normal so volatility means how much your investment goes up and down and crazy and like the how much it changes over time whereas we think of risk the two of us think of risk as the risk of losing money and if you're in it for the long term in the stock market your risk of losing money is extremely small but the industry has confused this and said oh risk means how much your investment changes in value over time but that for us is volatility so let's have a look at these three different funds that are on offer what are they what are they offering they've us, got Alan? careful balanced and adventurous careful 80% of your money in this fund ends up in bonds. So that is uber cautious, like unbelievably cautious. We personally would never invest in something like that. But when they ask you a question, how okay are you with losing money? People generally say, I don't want to lose money. And yes. then they put you in a fund like this, which is incredibly bad for your long term success. For us, investing is for the long term and most of Monzo's customers are actually on the young side. This is a new starter bank that would attract young customers in their 20s, 30s. And for us, you want to be investing as much as you can in equities, in stocks and shares and not in bonds. That's just going to drag your performance and have less money for retirement. Because for us, investing is for the long term, for retirement, for the rest of your life. Not putting it in and out, not messing around with it, putting it in and leaving it. Second one they have is balanced, aim for a higher return with a medium level of risk. What they mean there is volatility, how much it goes up and down. Uh, and 34% of your money ends up in bonds. For us, that's more risk averse than you should be even in retirement. So for a young person, this would be a dreadful thing to choose. And by young, we probably mean anyone who's still working. <laughs> um and then finally, adventurous. Okay, this is a bit better. Your investment value may have more ups and downs. 100% of your money in this fund ends up in shares. That's way better. So like, in terms of the investment, the only one we would pick if you're of working age will be adventurous. But we actually need to know what it is. It's powered by BlackRock. BlackRock are actually a very good provider. They provide index funds. They provide all sorts of different things. So like, we don't have a problem with BlackRock at all. They're a great base for this. 
I guess it's just what did Monzo choose? It's worth saying as well at this point, we are not financial advisors. This is not regulated advice. This is our opinion and how we would invest our money. And so do your own research. <laughs> yes. And if you don't know any of the words we're saying, then watch the Rebel Finance School. It'll break down all of those elements for you. It's got a learning element in the app. OK, great. They teach you some stuff. I haven't looked at what they're teaching you, but I'm a bit worried. Um, <laughs> Here we go. Here's so the key bit. So this is the bit. thing, because we want to look at what are the fees and what's it invested in. We've had a little bit of what's invested in, which we'll look a little bit more as well. But what are the fees, Alan? How much will it cost us to invest? And investing, there is always fees involved. And your job as an investor is to minimise minimize those fees as much as possible. There will always be fees. It's just about minimising them. Fees are critical. So they have an overall, you're paying 0.59% of your investment value. So that sounds not a lot. It's less than 1%. But if you look down here, that's a 0.14 fund fee, which actually that's a very similar fund fee. So most of our inf money is invested in the Vanguard FTSE Developed World X UK Fund. And we pay, I think it is 0.14. Yeah. Um, so the fund fee is fine. Then it has a platform fee of 0.45. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that is triple, triple what Vanguard will charge you for their platform fee. Yeah, so there's different ways of looking at this. You've got the platform or the provider. So we're looking at Monzo. There are loads of other different platforms. There's Vanguard, there's Hargreaves, Lansdowne, loads of different Interactive ones. Investor, Halifax. Exactly. And Monzo's platform fee, so just to have the account, they're charging you 0.45%. Vanguard charges 0.15%. So straight away, we're seeing that there's a much cheaper way of investing. So let's, should we look at what the... Well, I'm almost tempted to finish the video there because like, based on that one <laughs> fact... I would not invest with Monzo. The answer is no, they are ripping you off. They are charging you a lot too much for this. And it's probably because it's actively managed, but we'll exactly. come on to finding that out. Um, but it's just too much. It's just the fees are so high. And what they're trying to do is get people who already have their app to think it's easy to invest with them. And it sounds like not a lot. Do not buy into this. Do not get tricked. They are overcharging you and that will destroy your long term financial future. We'll keep going because we want to talk to you about the investments as well, because, you, yeah, like I wouldn't do it based on that one thing. But let's keep going. So we're going to look at the adventurous one because of those three. You remember, they had the cautious, the balanced and adventurous. Adventurous is the one that's invested completely in stocks and shares. So let's have a look at that okay. and see what we think of it. Yes, and you can do it within an ISA, which is great, so it's tax-free savings. I actually did some Googling and I found the specific fund that you invested in. It's called the MyMap7 Select ESG Fund. What does that mean? I have no idea. It sounds awfully fancy, um, but you go down here, the fund is in the MyMap series, da da da, great. Um, they just use the name to differentiate from other funds. Uh, the fund's aim is to provide over five years of return on your investment. Good. They want to actually give you a return through. And this is the bit an actively managed portfolio. You were right, Katie. You spotted it straight at the start. It is actively managed. Now, our personal opinion is actively managed nearly always gets worse results than passive investing and you pay more for it hence the triple the platform fees like just steer clear steer clear based on that um it's interesting to note as well so if you scroll down a bit you can see that there are 12 holdings in this fund you think what does that mean that means there's only 12 different yeah, here you go, number of holdings, 12. So that thinks, well, you're not very diversified. You only have 12 different things that you own within this fund. But actually digging into it, we saw that it's a fund of funds. So someone has chosen, the, the manager, the person actively managing this, has chosen some different funds to invest in. So, and these funds themselves are index funds. They're not, they're, they're passive, meaning you just have everything that's in the index. But someone is over the top saying, well, we should have some of this and some of that and some of the other, which is way more complicated than it needs to be. We think you should just pick one 
global index fund and you can check out our other videos that we've done on that explaining what we mean by that but if you actually look at here's the top holdings so this is the list of holdings the top one the first is the iShares MSCI USA ESG enhanced USDA we could break down all of that USA is America ESG is the like a sustainable fund where they take out businesses that they don't believe are ethical sustainable um, enhanced I'm not sure how they enhanced it but I generally don't like enhancements because it normally means they've made it worse uh, USD it's in American dollars and A is for accumulation so 18% of it is invested in America you've got uh, another American fund here which is another 16% which I don't understand why do you need Two American They're funds. Just those are complicating things, aren't they? And then they have a third US equity index uh, fund here, which is another 12%. Why do you need three American funds? Why can't you just pick one total stock market fund? They're overcomplicating it. You have a Europe fund, Europe ESG. Uh, then you have another American fund, but this is an SRI fund. And SRI is the old name for what ESG actually is. So they seem to have picked three of the same funds. Then you have a UK equity index, which is 7.5%, which we've looked a bit further down. We'll have a look at the country holdings, but about 12.5% of this fund is invested in the UK, which is about triple what it should be. So it has a fairly strong home country bias, which if you've watched any of our videos, you know we think is a bad thing. Uh, do not overinvest in the UK, despite what Jeremy Hunt wants you to do. Avoid it, avoid it, avoid it. This we're talking about is the temptation of people just because you are in the UK to want to invest more heavily in the UK. Whereas we think the approach that is best is to mirror the whole world and the UK makes up only 4% of the global market. Why do I need to have more than that in the UK? Just because I happen to be in the UK, live in the UK. I don't think that makes any sense. The UK is not the centre of the investing world, um, so we will avoid that. You scroll down and it's got a little bit about uh, exposure breakdowns. How much is in ETFs, exchange traded funds? How much is in straight funds? and then cash and derivatives, has the price of the stocks and shares, and then the portfolio manage. Steve. Steve, 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 what are you playing at? If you want to come on the channel and tell us why you have picked these ones, we would love you to be here. Also, it's interesting to know, if you have a portfolio manager, it probably means your fund is actively managed, so like, there just is, get out. There is a human choosing what your money is invested in, and that is the way to lose money. You just want to own everything in the stock market in one simple global fund so there you have it we have been looking at monzo's latest investment app they've been trying to get you to use it they've been promoting it everywhere the fees are triple what you will pay with vanguard in different places the fund seems to be it is actively managed and like the whole thing, Monzo had a great opportunity to do something really good for its customers and they have completely missed the mark. Avoid at all costs. I don't know how we can make this any other clearer. Um, but yeah, a lot of you have been writing to us going it would make life a lot easier if we could have our investments in our banking app. And we agree it would be great but they've just, this will mess up your long-term financial future. Avoid it. And actually, convenience in this sort of area of your life is probably a bad thing you don't want to be able to move money in and out of those investments the temptation is oh it's right there let me fiddle with it let me play with it no <clears throat> excuse me the idea is to be investing for the long term set it forget it you don't want it to be in your face you want to put it to one side and just let it grow in the background and not have that temptation to dip in and out of it so monzo can you do better next time? Because this time you have not delivered. So please avoid the Monzo investment account. It's just not going to deliver for you over the long term. Now, we would also like to review other platforms for you. Please drop us a message in the comments and let us know what other platforms do you want us to look at to review their investments and review what they're doing. We would love to know. Thanks for tuning in.